You're following a Redbud Group's lesson featuring Explore the Bible. Redbud Baptist Church is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas. Redbud Groups meet Sundays at 1010 a.m., but we have other small groups that meet throughout the week. Grab your Bible and study with us. We are going church, growing disciples. Enjoy the lesson. Hey everyone, we're here doing the Explore the Bible. We're going to be in session 10. It says God honors and Andy came in to uh, help lead this so we can uh, learn uh, all the history that we need to learn about it and uh, move through it uh, as well as possible, but we're glad you're participating with us. I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. So grab your coffee or whatever you want to drink and uh, a donut or something healthier. And then, of course, uh, grab your Bible and come do a Bible study because it's no fun for us to do the Bible study by ourselves. It's always a group thing. So uh, try to participate with as many people as you can when you're doing Bible studies. That's what I like to do anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for an opportunity to come together. Let the Holy Spirit lead today and guide us through this lesson and as we move further into Kings. Lord, let us learn more about you what we need to apply to our hearts and hands and to our feet, to our lives, and, and what we need to share with others so that we can allow others to know how much of a loving God you are, the direction you want us to go in our lives, and Lord, most of all, the gospel message that saves. So Lord, allow us to be strong in that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Miss Andy. I try, um, I try to stay light on the history. Oh, no, I, I love the history. Uh, coming back from the Israel trip, it even, it's even yeah. even more. More relevant. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you start putting some of the land stuff going on. and that things, makes it, it, it is, and we're going to be doing some Wednesday night stuff coming up on the, I guess, the 17th of uh, September. I, I, I'm I'll, August, I'll rather. Through, yeah. And we'll go all the way through September. So there'll be about seven weeks Wednesday nights. We're going to try our best to connect the Bible to the, the things that we saw and to the land and to the history of Israel and, um, and, and uh, the Jews and stuff the best we can anyway, you know, as far as what me and Holly got to see in uh, seven days of uh, running where Jesus she walked. walked. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that is, is apparently pro appropriate. Yeah, it, it was quite fast. Yeah, I mean, you were just... We're doing about five or six uh, places a day. Uh-huh. And, and the idea was to kind of get you an overview, you know, because we're a bunch of pastors and staff with their wives, kind of give you an overview of the Holy Land. And then um, the idea would be to take others on future trips and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's why we got like a discounted rate. And uh, maybe at know, some point you can go back and, and do a more. That that would be so awesome. Be great. Uh, there's a couple of places that we missed that me and one of the other pastors were talking about. It would have been cool to go see. Um, uh, I want to say one of them would, was, um, oh, my gosh. The Gideon Springs. We didn't. I don't think we got over to Gideon Springs. Uh, there was another city close. Is that to where that. he knelt to drink? Huh? That, was it Gideon? Yeah, that's was that's where Gideon? they knelt down and and and, and you know and drank. And yeah. drank. They were chosen yeah. because of their drinking habits. Yeah, I just like. Uh, I don't know about that as much as it I'm was. You know, you know, we always think about that. Yeah. I, I kind of want to think a little bit, you know, in, in a different way down those lines because I'm thinking, okay, well, Gideon. You know, put God to the test. You know, if the fleece is wet and the threshing floor is dry, you know, and the, so God's going to make sure that He knows it's God that's taking yeah. him through this. So yeah. I'm going to take you down to about 200 men or so against you know thousands, and then you understand that I'm in sometimes, control. I'm all powerful, God. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes I think, unfortunately, maybe we test God. Yeah. yeah. Is this really what you want me to do? If you really want me to do this, you know, show I, me. And, and I think, <laughs> in a way, that's okay. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't think that's bad. We didn't rush into to things. It, it's true. when we ignore God because we try to write it off as yeah, that's nah, not what, that's really not what God yeah. really wants. Yeah. You know, yeah. when it's truly, I don't really want to do that. A so. Exactly. So I think exactly. that's more the thing. But but yeah. Gideon, uh, he, you know, I, I know the judges as they go through, and I know we're in Kings today, but it's, you go through the judges that they gets a little bit worse each judge they go to. By the time you're getting to Samson, which, you know, as a kid, we we're like, oh, yeah, Samson, you know, we're all excited. you're starting to look at him. And when you actually read through them, you're like, is he really a, 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 a judge or a hero or is he is he a good guy or a bad guy? Because it's hard to tell by this point, you know. 
but uh, Gideon, I definitely love his story, and and um, he's a, uh, you know, you know to 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 see God at work, and then turn around and say, okay, it might have been a fluke. Let's go ahead and try it this way, God. Just so I'm sure that's you. <laughs> so anyway, I I am um, again. At least he was communicating with God, and uh, that's awesome. But today, we're going to be talking about kings, and uh, me and uh, Andy agree that during this time, I don't think he wanted to be a king over anything in Israel, that, whether it was the northern kingdom or southern kingdom, because it seemed like um, not only was your reign short, you, you, your lifespan might have been short. I mean, even if you were a family member, your lifespan might have been really short. It, but, but who's... the Let's not make victims of the kings. No, no, not necessarily. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what I'm just yeah. saying is it's it's going to be killed, kill, 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 or, or assassinated or whatever. And um, it's hard to keep up with all the different changes during this time. And, uh, again, we're, we're in Second Kings, and, you know, you start reading through chapter 11 and moving on into 12, and that's Second Chronicles 22, verses uh, 10 through uh, Gives you more. 28. Gives you a little bit deeper background mm -hmm. to it, but... You know, we won't have time to go no. through all that, but it's um, we don't, you know, even well, yeah, it it you could really get into this and oh yeah, and just, get stuck in there. Yeah, I mean, and, draw yeah. draw and, diagrams, and get, not, yeah. get get all the family trees going on. You know, uh, like I said, we we usually have stuff over here, and we have our list of all the kings and who was good kings and who was bad kings. Mm -hmm. The bad kings outnumber the good yeah. kings, yeah. and uh, all the timelines here, and it's it's just. But during this time, it just well, I mean. We're looking at these things and, and we have like, uh, you know, uh, instead of doing years, we started going months. months. That's because they were killed <laughs> off. And, and when we get, um, we need to kind of discuss that at the end, just kind of to give a, a preview of next week. Because Correct. the Northern Kingdom, actually, by the time, the, the lesson content next week, they have fallen. And God's telling them why. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and everything that God tells them. Is going to happen. Yeah, you know, and so. and so we say, okay, does the Southern Kingdom learn you know, from that? <laughs> and the Southern Kingdom would be uh, Judah in this case, right? Yeah, you Judah. Know? Yeah, and uh, Curtis, we, you know, because we'll say Israel. And yeah, I, Israel and, and was the, the Northern the Kingdom, northern and, I, and, yeah. and Southern at one time. It's all one thing, but when it's That's put in two, you have I, Israel, which when we call I say northern, Israel, I, I specify and, and southern, northern Kingdom or the whole and, nation. Uh, so the, the Judah is where, you know, they're going to have what, like Jerusalem and stuff like that mm -hmm. as far as, as where the point Judah, of worship is. Judah and, like and Benjamin, and in some instances, I've seen Simeon yeah. included within, uh, within Judah. Like a small part of Simeon or something well, like that? Simeon or? is actually within, well, anyway. Yeah, yeah that's not, no, that's we, true. We won't get off on that. But, you know, basically when God said it was going to be, you know, but you're, he's going to put them over one kingdom mm -hmm. that's, or one uh, tribe. You know, it's kind of that. That's Judah, the and, they seem, and 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 also, I have read accounts where, um, uh, whenever the Assyrians took over the northern kingdom, took over Israel, that some of the some of those people actually fled to Judah, yeah. which would mean that they, we would have the different tribes rep represented within the tribe of Judah. So that's yeah. an interesting thought. Yeah, I mean, and then a few weeks ago, we you know when they did split the kingdoms, you know, we knew he was putting the the golden calves, if you will, to, to worship in these different areas to keep them from coming to from Jerusalem. Coming across. You know, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and, and, and uh, you know, go to the city of Dan or go to, I, I'm not sure on the, on the southern Bethel. part. Bethel. Okay, Bethel, to Bethel, Bethel, and we're going to sit up and, and, and go to those places instead so would, of going, going to, to Jerusalem, Jerusalem because they didn't want and, to lose them to the And the one southern. of the subsequent lessons, that, you know, God mentions, or that when, when he's talking about um, their fall in history he talks about the two calves that were yeah that were made to so but <clears throat> today we we've been we have been in the northern kingdom in israel the last right. few weeks so today our lesson is focused on the southern kingdom Correct. um but just briefly in the northern kingdom we saw the death of ahab at the end of first kings i think he died in battle yeah and then at um at one point Elisha uh, anoints Jehu, who will take over yeah. from uh, Ahab's successors. His his um, the last descendant of Ahab to to rule was Joram. 
Yeah. And Jehu kills him. Yeah. And he kills Ahijah. Yeah. And that, uh, interesting. Ahijah. 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 Or A C I. Let me see. I've got it down here. Let me look at my chart. A H A Z I A H. It is uh Ahaziah. Yeah, Ahaziah. Ahaziah. Yeah. Okay. He uh had a short uh, reign, but he had gone to visit see Ahaziah was the grandson of Ahab. Right. And 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 so I, I guess he'd gone to visit his cousin Joram. And I would say collateral damage in the wrong place at the wrong time, but uh, he was in God's time, so it was no mistake. Correct. But because he was there whenever Jehu killed Joram, Ahaziah uh, was killed also. Right. And that left, and we'll, we'll get back to that in just one second, but that left the southern kingdom without a king. So, but Jehu, um, when he killed Joram and took over the kingship, he got he did what God wanted him to do, he was the half good king. The yeah, only half. Yeah, there was one yeah. half good king in all yeah. the Israel's, and he was the one. Yeah. And because uh, he went bad later, but he he did kill. Uh, he had uh, Jezebel executed. That's an interesting story. It's oh, I think it's in maybe chapter six. I I don't know exactly where that that story of her demise is explained, but she puts on her makeup and fixes her hair, and they throw her. You know, down to the dog. Yeah, that's <laughs> a that's a mother. Jezebel. Oh, Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh, okay. okay Whatever. Yeah, Jezebel. Jehu ordered her death and ordered the death of the Baal worshippers and the servants. Right, right. And right. that was what God needed. Um, of course, we see them appear in the southern kingdom, and then at the end of the northern kingdom, I think they're back. But he, this is what God wanted him to do. Hazael, who was who took over the kingship of Syria, had started it, but uh, Jehu continued with it. And this was prophesied to Elijah before he was taken up to God. Right. Because, and God said, this is going to happen. You're not going to see it happen, but this will happen. This will so, happen, yeah. So it did. And then um, God promised Jehu that he would have four successors, and he did. They were all evil, but and, and we can, we'll uh, see what happened later with them. But Jehu right now is ruling in, the, in Israel, the northern kingdom, Ahaziah has been killed, so and and he wasn't a son of anybody's. He was like what the captain of the guard or the captain of the Jehu, army. Yes, yes, they, no, he wasn't. Because, He's because got, a lot of times you're going to see like son or, or no, mother, mostly no, sons. No, if um, this, of course this I gave this, this chart captain, to my, my class that, uh, yeah. but it yes he was and, and he, he was the last. It was the last son of Jehoram was the was uh, uh, the last son of Ahab, and yep. then Jehu. Jehu yeah. was just a captain, and then that, that that happened often. It, it actually did happen quite often in the in the um, southern kingdom. Yeah, the southern kingdom. Not it, as, uh, not I mean, much in the, the northern north. kingdom. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. The, in the northern kingdom, there was change of uh, of yeah, correct. Tri tri yeah, so the, the, in, only, in Israel, the only the yeah. only break in the Davidic dynasty occurs at this point, whenever Ahaziah's mother. Seizes the throne. Yeah, uh, which is, that's she, Athaliah. Athaliah. Yeah. Now, Athaliah was the daughter of Ahab, and this commentary says she was also the daughter of Jezebel. Some think she was, some think she wasn't. Yeah. But if she was the daughter of Jezebel, then Jezebel becomes an ancestor of Christ. Oh, yeah. Along with Tamar and Rahab right, and Ruth. Right, correct, correct. But, um... But we're not we're not sure. We're not sure about that. Yeah. But she is from the line of Ahab for sure. Correct, correct. And uh, but she has some of the characteristics of Jezebel. She kills, you know. She she wants to secure her position, so she kills off. Yeah. I don't know if she had other sons, but she certainly killed off the uh, the any heirs, and she would have had to kill her grandsons. Yeah. And except for one, and yeah. she either didn't know about him or overlooked him. So and of course that that was uh, and, and then Joash yeah then you're gonna have Joash and Amaziah which were like like you said earlier half good and then mm -hmm. actually going to move into a couple of good ones at least in the 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 Judah before side. we go to before we go to Ahaz but, but we're, we're but not really Jehu over here on the on the southern side I mean on the northern side rather he's the only one that's even close he, he and have, only halfway so have, yeah and, and and you know I guess we can consider Solomon you know. Over both kingdoms, he would have been a halfway. 
kind of, you know, started mm-hmm. off good, but they eventually yeah. went against what God was telling him to I do and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to see here that Joash kind of strays from the... Uh, right. Joash definitely uh, strays from, ends up being a... Well, it depends which Joash we're going to be talking about. Because mm-hmm. you have Joash on both sides, but you're talking about the Joash over on the on the Judah side. Yes. Yeah. The he, one that we're he, going to study today. Yeah. He, he, he kind of ends up being half and half. Yeah. yeah. And, the, um, and, we, and this week we will turn to the Southern Kingdom. Yeah. Um, Keep in mind, there's just not, not that many kings that kept the promises all the way through their their life mm-hmm. if you will and, and and we realize even in david's case you know you're talking about uh you know he's a man after god's own heart but you know he did do some brutal stuff in a sin but the thing here is he continued to have faith in god he never he, strayed he, from he, god he didn't turn to other gods he, he sinned and we and in the sense that we all turn from god when we right. sin but he never worshiped an idol him. Yeah, and and he he was he was true and, to God. He had some personal fleshly uh, failures, issues, yeah. But his his he and, and that's kind of what we have here. I mean, mm-hmm. the probably the difference between a, a good king and a bad king was the fact that the one was keeping with God and worshiping God, no matter what sinful thing they're going through, whereas the bad ones were turning to idols. And, and went through with mm-hmm. idols. And, 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 and then those half ones were usually the ones that started with God, but then eventually up, turned to idols yeah. by the end of the, the yeah. reign. It didn't go the other yeah. way. But but there was some, was was more more good as we see good in the southern kingdom. And Jehu is, yeah. the, is the only trace of anything good because, oh, he, followed, but because he followed God's command. Yeah. And God promised him four successors, which he gave him, but then... We'll see what happened with that. Yeah, next week. Yeah, but um, that becomes uh, interesting too. <laughs> uh, but Joash, okay, back to the Southern Kingdom. Right. Athaliah is on the throne. She's there for six years. Joash was a year old whenever right. she took took the throne, and his sister, um, and his sister, his aunt, uh, Jehoshaphat, who was married to the high priest Jehoiada. Now, some of this information comes from Chronicles. Right, and you and if you have your um, quarterly, it'll you, you'll see it gives you the references in Chronicles yeah. if you want to go and find that. Correct. But um, so she took him and hid him in the uh, a, a temple in the in a temple room. Right. And, and for for the next for the next six years, and uh, after six years, uh, Jehoiada, the priest saw an opportunity to restore the throne to the line of David, and he established seven-year-old Joash as king. Correct. And oversaw Athaliah's execution. So yeah. they got rid of the... She she, she just sounds like Jezebel. I just think she probably does. <laughs> right to Jezebel a little bit. So, um, and that's kind of, that is where we pick up our story today. But under the, the tutelage of Jehoiada, Josh, uh, Joash... Serve the Lord. Jehoiada also led a covenant renewal between um, the king, the people, and the Lord. The hmm. people tore down the temple of Baal. So, see, they Correct. had been worshiping Baal Correct. too, and killed its priest. And Joas changed the system for supporting temple restoration. And that's where we, our story begins today. Yeah. Um, and if you guys happen to have in your Bibles or different places where you see Jehoash, you know, J. Uh, J E H O A S H. That's the same thing, or, or yeah, same thing as Joash. They're, yeah, they're synonymous. Jo- Jehoram is the same, it can be the same as Joram, and yeah. So when Jehoram, who could also be Joram, was ruling in the Southern Kingdom, Joram was ruling. In, yeah. I, yeah, it gets. It, it does, and like I said, after we, next week we'll have one we, kingdom. We we have our charts. <laughs> yeah, just trying to keep all this straight, and I mean, you know. You have to do that. I mean, yeah. there's no way when you're going through all these kings, especially right here, when two or three months and you're switching out and things like mm-hmm. that, it's it's or just very few years, even for that matter, it's really hard to keep up with them. So it's um, it is good to pull those out every once in a while, just to remind yourself what's what's happening at this time and who's exactly. doing what. You know, <laughs> um, that's why. In in my Sunday class, we decided. You know, we these store, and I mean, you know. You it's decide to rename a, all the kings and make your own timeline. Exactly. No. <laughs> well, th- these sto- I mean, you know, everybody knows I love history, so these stories are interesting to me, and they're interesting. Yeah. But we wanted to see. We wanted. We want application. So, uh, what I've I've 
started doing is at the beginning of the lesson saying, let's look for these points in the cool. story. Very well, nice. first of all, the subject theme title, God honors people who demonstrate right. God's priorities. And we'll see this as the overall theme. But let's also look for our see what our responsibility for keeping God's house from falling into disrepair and why. We'll look at that. Yeah. And uh, we need to be responsible uh, for our, for we need to be accountable Correct. for our stewardship. Not just the leaders, but we as, as people, right. as, as believers. And we need to serve God in such a way that others can see the Lord in our work. Ooh. Good business practices. Yeah. And um, I'm going to try if I don't forget. As, as I mean, in all our practices. Yes. But, but definitely business practices. But, but whenever we see these workers and how they took care of the temple, yeah. they, were a witness, they were a witness to God. They, they were um, um, glorifying God. So Absolutely. we'll try to point those those out so we can see <laughs> application here. Okay. Absolutely. That's great. Oh, okay. Um, Joe Ash, okay, well, Joe Ash had given specific directions for the temple's repair. He has been restored. This is probably some years later. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think he's six years old anymore. I think he's, probably, this is probably over the years. You know, he's he has had an interest in this. He, he Under the uh, wings of the priest Jehoiada, he, he sought to serve the Lord. And he was personally motivated to restore the temple and its former splendor. And so, um, let's look, read verses 4 and 5, first of all. Okay. See what he... In, in chapter 12 of 2 Kings, verses 4 through 5. 5, Jehoash said to the priest, All the money of the holy things that was brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons and the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take each from his donor and let them repair the house wherever any need of repairs is discovered. Okay. The, he's, the temple was in this repair. Okay. We said, well, why is it so important? You know, why, why do we spend such so much money on the church, fixing the church up? Um we know that God cannot be contained in, in a building of any kind. Correct. But the temple, as well as the church, symbolizes his presence. And it was where his name was to be magnified. And we don't let our our homes go into disrepair. We don't say, oh, well, it doesn't make any difference, you know. We fix up our own houses. Some of us do. <laughs> right. So... Why do we why do we neglect the house of God? Apparently, they I it doesn't say what they were spending the money on, but par apparently um, they were doing the least they had to do to keep it running. And and he said, "This is not right. This is God's house." Right. And and it, it, it could compare to you know the the church as well. I mean, I realize it's not the temple. No, the temple's right here. But but he has given us to our uh, to take care to be uh, managers over or stewards over. Uh, this property and, and the place for us to meet together and to train up people and right. stuff like that. Right, well, where we meet together and, 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 and we need to take together. care of that because yes, we did. because he gave that to us. And so, I mean, in a way, it's not a direct comparison, but there is a comparison. Yeah, there you know? is. And if we go on, and, and you can correct me. No, no, no. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm serious because sometimes, um, I, like with his, I get, I get, I get kind of into comparisons. Right. But I saw so many comparisons with with, with the church here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, it was kind of like, okay, you know, we're not spending the money we need to. We need to set up a building fund. Right. We need to set aside money just for this purpose. Right. And um, and, but and we're not talking about making huge uh, multi uh, campus whatever you know, mm -hmm. assemblies that are the size of a stadium or anything like that. That's not what we're talking about here. You know, uh, places where the Christians can meet now, you know, can we meet mm -hmm. each other's houses and do that? Yes, we can. You know, it's a little bit harder to get together and, and, and plan things together. But, you know, it, it's like I said, it's kind of one of those things that there's a give and take to it, you know. Well, and, and I think I think a church stands stands as a symbol to the it world. It does. Okay. If, if, if not just in, in our lives, I mean, I realize that um, the reason why God would be present there in, in the sanctuary is because believers are there mm -hmm. in the sanctuary. 
And then when you when when people get in trouble, no matter even you know what they do, right? Where's the first place when they try to find the church? So, so it, you it, know that that's that's why our Sunday mornings become so important is because there's going to be people visiting the church because. They know that you meet on Sunday mornings. They know. And usually that's going to be a situation where God's changed their heart one way or another. Usually it's from brokenness. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you get all the way down to the ground, and that's when you realize the only place that you can look to to, to, to help you is going to be God. Well, if, if And they're only... going to go to the church, you know, looking for help there. And, um, you know. If it, only it... good things happened. Right. None, you know, that's why, you know, we would live on our own sufficiency so that that's what, right there'll okay. be no dependency on god right yeah correct but okay so let's see okay this this was the okay we've got to right. do something about this temple correct you know we've let it fall we, into we disrepair and that's just not what yeah. so what happened verses six and seven all right so in verses six and seven it says oh my thing doesn't move now <laughs> but by the 23rd year king of jehoash the priests had made no repairs on the house Therefore, King Jehoash summoned Jehodai, the priest, and the other priests and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now, therefore, take no more money from your donors, but hand it over for the repair of the house. Okay, so they, and, and the, the 23rd year, so this Joash was at least probably 29, about 29. Yeah, 29, 30. So he, was, he, would been, he had been, uh, he started young. And, but Jehoiada had taught him well. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't... Probably would. Maybe yeah, a little and, bit older and, and why he hadn't fo followed through, Jehoiada hadn't followed through with it, I don't know. But it, it's one of those things where, you know, so-and-so is supposed to be in charge. That's why I say we we say we can't always blame our leaders. If we have a job to do, it was probably because one of the uh, people that served the priest perhaps wasn't doing the job they need to do. We all need to do our jobs. Yeah. They're, they're, but he but he didn't hesitate to call Jehoiada yeah. on it. There, there was either distraction or not followed through or something. Yeah, what, wasn't what happened? Because that, what, what, that was a yeah. direct command from the yes, king, it was. you know. So And um, so the, the priest had uh, taken care, had uh, taken care, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm having some trouble with my with my reading. reading glasses. Because, well, yeah. Uh, the priest had not taken uh, greater care to implement the, the king's plan, Correct. despite Joash's respect to Jehoiada. He called him in also, and this is where the priests had failed to fulfill yeah, their responsibility. I mean, it, it says here in the scripture that they made no repairs on the mm -hmm. house, none whatsoever. So, so I I you know I don't know why. But he said, uh, okay, so what are we going to do? And, and we know that, you know, it just falls apart even more. It doesn't get mm -hmm. better over time. It gets more deteriorated over time. So, so I okay, we're going to change the way we do things. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, and um, we we had a, we have, you know, we have like a building fund. Correct. And whenever money comes in, you know, like somebody, right, okay, I spent, I designate this building building. For right. the building fund, it goes into our building fund, and I know personally that this church takes very good care to make sure that the designated funds go where yeah, they go should. Where go, yeah. Very good, yeah. and they have even special accounts. But it all goes into the treasury. It all goes into the general, you know, Correct. treasury of the church. But it's very carefully yeah, monitored. If, 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 but if they it's were dedicated to the building fund or the remodel fund, things like right. that, it goes directly to that. And it'll be used directly for that. So yeah. and 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 so we do we do a good job of that, but they weren't. So he says, "Okay, we're gonna do away with the middleman. <laughs> we're gonna go directly we're, to whenever we have something for the building fund. It's not repairs. gonna go into treasure. We're gonna give it to the construction worker." But, but which of course, we, we haven't read the verse yet. But <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, you did. But the yeah, you didn't. You read it where it says, "Don't well, take any silver from your aunt from your uh, instead had it handed over to the repair of the temple." Right. And so the priests agree that they should take no money, mm -hmm. no more money from the people, and that they should not, re uh, and that they should not repair the house. And uh, but the very next verse is what I'm trying to get at. It, I think it's uh, no, you, no it's it, was verse, it. it was in verse. It was in verse seven that he right. he says, "Why haven't you repaired?" Well, and that and they agreed. Um, 
Leaders are accountable for their actions, but all of us bear responsibility for our stewardship. That was one of the correct, things that correct. we said. That well, they, what I was going to get at is the okay. fact that the you know, the workmen uh, are trustworthy. Yeah, and we're going to see so that. So we'll get that eventually. Yeah, yeah. And, but this is not so, okay. This is not something we would probably do. Correct. But but we are trustworthy. Our church is trustworthy in in, in that. Respect. Yeah, we're, we're going to give but, it directly to the builders or whatever, yeah, and, and exactly. skip out the middle people. And exactly. Like that. But uh, and these workers were probably within the members of the temple. I mean, they they I were probably. I, I'm not sure. I'm sure they're going to be part of the, the Jewish community yeah. or like that. But we, we and, see. But but they're also they have. I don't want, want to say pride in a bad way, but they take. Um, care in their work they right. want their work to be done right because it, it's the, it's their reputation too yeah so and, if and, you look at the stuff i mean um you know when me and holly were in israel the the detail i mean in the, all the stone works and stuff like that was just incredible it took a very special person an artist if you will to it, put yeah, that together yeah. and, and and to keep that up to to date and up to par i guess even the utensils and stuff that they're using the the mm -hmm. the bows and the golden this and the silver that needed care and kept up with as well but we will talk about that because those were separate yeah but but um yes yeah, so, okay we're going we're to hand this over to the to the, to the workmen yeah um everything we have money time talents families jobs everything. should be used for its this his purpose like joe ash God will call us to account for how we have used his gifts. Mm. And we're told we all have gifts. And um, some gifts seem, or I know I've, I know everybody tired of hearing this. I always wanted to be able to sing. I just, you know, I've always, I've always admired singer, any mus musician since I was little. But th that wasn't Andy, we, we, God's we know, intent for me. We, but anyway, we, we know you can sing, you know. <laughs> Oh, I, I can sing. But, <laughs> That's all that matters but, is but, your heart stay. Yeah. But one thing. of these days I'm I'm Yeah. If 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 it's necessary for my happiness. Yeah. Uh, I know I'll have all everybody everybody thing like David Phelps, but yeah, yeah you know, I can sing. Yeah. <laughs> so Okay. Do you have anything to add to that? So th no, th this is the situation here. Okay. So, so we're you This know, is what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna set up God a, a you in charge of this stuff as a steward to this. And, you know, we need to be using them for God's mm -hmm. purpose and God's glory, you know. And uh, over here, we're gonna, I, I read where it said that the people that were, that well, um, we're going to see what the plan that they set set forth, which is, you know, sounds a little bit familiar to what we, what we do also. Um, but that probably the people in charge weren't the original priests that were in charge of the, that, that point was made by the commentary. They probably got the different people to... Uh, guard the the offering okay right. read let's read um go ahead and read let's see um just go ahead and, and read 9 through 12 because this this is the the uh, the uh, plan that they had okay so then jehoda jehoda <laughs> the priest took the chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side as one entered the house of the Lord, and the priest who guarded the threshold put it, put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. It sounds familiar already there, doesn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> mm -hmm. And what it, whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up, and they bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they would give the money that was weighed out to the hands of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord. And the masons, the stone cutters, as well as the as well to buy timber and quarried stone for making repairs in the house of the Lord and for any outlay for the repairs of the house. Okay, the the um, <laughs> the stone cutters, though, that, that, you know, that you were mentioning, yeah, how they were cut out really well. Um, so they set up a specific building fund and a guarantee that the money would go for the temple uh, repairs. Right. And they had somebody guarding it. And like I said, the, the commentary uh, insinuated it probably wasn't the same priest who uh, who had originally been in, in charge of it. Um. And uh, interesting here again in Chronicles, I think it's Chronicles 9 and 7, it talks about um, 
no, it's Chronic, excuse me, it's Second Chronicles 24, 9 through 11. They said that each person gave joyfully. And also they pointed out the fact that while these repairs were being made, they still were worshiping. It wasn't like, okay, you know, it's going to take us six months to do this. We're not going to have, they had worship in the temple while it was being repaired. So the people could actually see that it was being done. So th right. this was encouraging also. And that's the same here. You know, we, we don't shut, if we're going to do uh, some building project, we don't shut the church down for it. You know, we, we still wor we still come and worship and we can, you know, see the work as it's done. Right. So, um, okay. Interesting fact here. The king's secretary, this represented the royalty. And the high priest, which represented the, the religious leadership, together counted the money. Right. So there was a check and balance There's here. Accountability here. We yeah. do that. We don't. We don't ever yeah. have one person you counting on. Have we a, have two a, people or three people the, sometimes to but, count yeah. count the money. So so this was to make sure um, that there wasn't anything done that shouldn't be done. But neither the royal court nor the religious leadership could uh, accuse the other of uh, mishandling funds. So, um, and like we said, the offering was to, was um, given directly to the workers. And it lists the workers here. The carpenters, those were the built, the, 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 they worked in wood, made wood, wooden structures. The uh, builders did maybe some of the basic fundamentals. The masons and the stone cutters did some of the stone work you were talking about. In uh, Corinthians, it also mentions the um, uh, the those who worked in iron and bronze. So this was this was a creative artistic endeavor too. Right. And these people put the put I mean, everything they like had the, into it. Just the carvings in the stone. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. the, the quarry. You know, they're they're cutting out the the blocks, if you will. And it has whatever. to fit just right. Yeah. So. It, like I said, when we were walking through there, I mean, it's just incredible. I, 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 I was just amazed. You know, one, the, the, the detail, but two, that the pieces were together in such a... How, how old were they? How old were they? Oh, we saw everything from uh, 2000 BC up to, you know, 400 mm -hmm. or 4th century, 4th or 5th century. And they're, you know, just beautiful works, you know. And they did it with their hands. They yeah. didn't have machines. And, th and this was... And, and they, we're going to see here in just a minute that these people yeah. could be well, trusted. When you're looking at stuff like the City of Dan, and there, there, there's a, the three arches up there, too, and that was mud brick. But the City of Dan is kind of, kind of like uh, stone rocks. I mean, more like you can see more of the rounded stuff. But when you get closer to uh, probably David's time and, uh, you know, Solomon and all through that, through uh, King, King uh, Herod the Great, you know, that area, you know, yeah, it's all these stones cut out beautifully. And uh, and I think that continues on for several centuries after that, mm -hmm. you know. So it's uh, I, I I'm just amazed, you know. <laughs> and e each group that came in, they they carved a little bit different. Their their columns were a little bit different. Their their decorative stuff was just a little bit different. So you can see, well, this was the Romans doing this, or you can see this was, a, you know, whoever the Corinthians they, doing they, this or whatever. They did beautiful, beautiful I, work. I mean, I, it, it's amazed me just the. With their hands, their very it, it's almost, I, that, that's my, it's yeah. almost like someone stamped it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, all the lines are just perfect and things like that. You know, almost perfect in the, in 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 across the 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 details. You know, whether they're putting flowers there or leaves or menorahs or whatever they're doing. You know, it's not like okay, it drifts down here and then comes back up there. You know, it's just like it's someone sat there and we're going to stamp it, but we're going to stamp it with a a press that's going to take it out of the stone. <laughs> and they're doing these with chisels. You know, <laughs> so. Incredible. So, so, um, and all it makes the point here that all this offering went to the labor, the materials Correct. for the, um, and yeah, for the temple. I want to say like, and yeah, the all the expenses for repairs, okay. and that's what I guess yeah. the outlay or what it was for that. So what our tithes and offerings do not simply keep the lights on in the house of God; they also glorify the God of the house. Yeah. And I, I want to say if we, if we failed anything here, it, it's to do with over these multiple years, there, there's certain things that probably with our, uh, 
our church, you know, Red Bud, because mm -hmm. we're trying to sometimes show how that it's similar to today and applicable, is there are some repairs we kind of fell behind on uh, for one reason or another. And um, like, you know, there people were thinking ahead. They, they put together like a fund going directly for the air conditioners and stuff like that because they know that it's going to cost a lot to replace some of these units that are really huge and and, that, and that's and what i'm saying the the integrity of our church is correct when it's they, designated they, for something it, so, it, that's so they, what it goes for so they really did that you know and really do that and uh and that's what's been going through all the years so you know and that's why red bud's still standing mm -hmm. you know at least the building physical property and stuff like that it's because over the years that they've um have done that you know kept up with that the best they could and um you know i think you know, and, and paint, just recently, like, our vestibule has been made so attractive. I think, and and you right. know that that's one thing that you know we can we can see. Yeah. And and what we did with um, um, the senior part of our church with yeah. that with that section there, we you know, do. made it made it where it's at least a lot more functional yeah. and multi use. Uh -huh. I, I always try to think of things. You know, you know, if we're just doing one thing per month in a room or one thing per week in the room or, or whatever, mm -hmm. then we're probably not utilizing, even our Sunday school rooms. I mean, me and Carlos always talk about our offices. I mean, if someone needs to put a Sunday school in our office, that's yeah. fine. You know, we get to double and, and down. And that has happened. And it has happened. happened. And, and, and we can uh, move on like that, but to make it useful for as many things as we mm -hmm. possibly can, not just one thing. And it, I'm not, you know, pointing fingers at anyone. I'm just saying, you know, the more we utilize this building, which is God's building, mm -hmm. the better stewards we are. And, and we have some people in our church. I, I, if I mention it, I, I'll forget somebody, so I won't mention some names, yeah, but we'll you get, know who they are. Yeah. They've just done a wonderful job awesome with their craft jobs. to come in. They're, and, they're and using their talents. The to, talents, to we, the, 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 you know, we had the um, the restroom there by the kitchen that was. To, yeah, the, incredible to come in yeah. and, and remodel and redo that. Um, and, and, of course, like you said the you know, the old adult, you know, five areas mm -hmm. and stuff like that and, and, and the ladies that came started. in and reorganized the kitchen i mean just mm -hmm. you know it's just and, a, and that's kind of what i mean by the, the the upkeep of it it is you know it's starting to move more towards a modern look to it yes and, yeah and i'm not saying that we didn't keep the thing going we did but you know it, it's just the, more they're, they're, more the, um um, you know, as we're doing the lights, I don't know what the, we're, we're, we're coming in with LED lights. You know, they're more energy efficient. They're brighter, and and they they don't get hot. Things like that. You don't have to replace all the ballasts all the time. You know, stuff like that. So so you're you're bringing it up to modern stuff. You know, I'm sure some of our electrical one. You know, if we look on the electrical stuff over here, it's still a two prong. You know, things like that. And and you're trying to bring it in. And of course, as we change things, we have to bring it into code. But but that's just so it can still function here. So. There's a responsibility for us um, to to keep the keep property our that house, you give us yep, and, and, to, and, to, up, and, to, up to date yep. and looking well mm -hmm. and working so you can well, continue you to use it. would be a place it. where people want, would, yeah. would, so, would like to come. Yeah, so this can be an outpost yep. for reaching the Christians in this area, exactly. you know. <laughs> so. so, okay. Um, now, we, we want to make the point here in verses 13 through 16 that the costs for items for worship were were paid out of the temple funds and not from the money collected for repairs. Yes. Like we don't use our building fund to right. pay the electric bill. Yeah, that but there were uh, but, not made for the house of the Lord basins but, of silver, snuffers, <laughs> bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or silver from money that was brought into the house of the Lord. For this was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. So there's a separate fund for... Uh, for each thing that was going to be going on. Snuffers, and is that so you can take the oil lamps and snuff them out? Is that a snuffer? <laughs> it's, uh, however, in Second Chronicles 24, 14, yeah. it says that only later, once the repairs were done, Correct. was the remaining silver and gold used to make utensils for worship. Correct. So it, 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 they're taking a very, very practical. Very focused. Maintaining the intended use of the people's contribution was important in restoring integrity to the offering system. And that's, again, I won't say it again, but that, that's something that I really feel like we do at this church. And then I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the, off that the, the church has been really a giving yes. church. Yes. And always has been. Yes. Every, every, um, so, um, okay, all the craftsmen did their job. Just yeah. as the people were dedicated to in giving, 
the laborers were faithful in doing. The temple could not have been closed while the uh, work took place. Hmm. So the progress on the repairs was evident er every time the worshippers visited the temple. I mean, that. So, okay. Now here to me is an, an astonishing fact. Verse 15. All right, so verse 15. Here, stick right over it. And they did not ask for an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The, yeah, the, the money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belongs to the priests. Okay. So they're but, still keeping the, the, the funds separate. Yeah, well, because, yeah, the priests... Uh, now, you tell I, if I understood this correctly, some whenever, uh, of course, the, the animal offerings were for Correct. the... Uh, of course, they were for the sacrifice, but anything from those was given to the priests that, you know, for eat. Yeah. And, but sometimes in, the, in of, with of these the animal offerings, like people that. would bring money, money offerings. And right. I guess that was the priest to keep right. also. Correct. It's part so. of the guilt offerings, stuff like that. But and, these. You know, with that said, just an interesting fact that, you know, like in, in the city of Dan, in the high places of Dan, they actually noticed uh, when they're digging stuff up that there was bones of certain animals, but only certain pieces certain portions of that animal because because yeah. the priests were part of a certain portion of that and then over on the other side is where all the rest of the portions were because they separated which even though dan was worshiping uh other gods by then they they were still keeping the jewish practices mm -hmm. if you will of certain parts that being been offered to the to, to, to the, the priests priest. and stuff like that or for the priests to use but so, but the faithfulness and honesty and the diligence of these workers you know, it, but they uh, were doing this. So, what does that does that have? Does that say anything to us today? I mean, what yeah. about the things we do? E even if they're se secular jobs, you know. Well, I'm, I'm talking about sec. I mean, it, it doesn't pertain directly to the church. Maybe. Right. Uh, I mean, well, like secular I talk, things for, I talk for years. Makes it or, a, yeah, a strange and, thing because you're always representing God, no matter exactly, who you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, so, and that that's that's. It, um, it, there's just no separation in that as far as the Christian life, but. But even looking at that, when you first read through this, and when I first read through it uh, several weeks ago when we were doing our regular reading, uh, it, it was just, I had to read that back a couple of times. It's like, wow, directly to them, because they're going to do yep. it honestly, but they, because they, they didn't even have to worry about it. You know, here they are, they're taking the, the, the king's representative, the secretary, and the priest, and they're counting together. I'm it, sorry, you can't have money. Trust yeah. there, but, yeah. but we're going to hand this directly over to the, yeah. the workmen because we trust them. So you're trusting them more than you trust the king's own and the priest's own. And it own. was justified. And it, yeah, <laughs> and, and so that this kind of gives you an idea of uh, the type but, of people they were working with. Yeah, there. and but don't you think that these people had established their reputation? Exactly, at, in exactly. The that's what we're getting at. Uh, it, and, and you do have that. You have some businesses that you know you can trust, mm -hmm. that these people are going to go uh, above and beyond to make sure that everything's done correctly. They're not the ones that are trying to find shortcuts, the ones that are trying. And you don't want shortcuts in mm -hmm. building stuff and, ever. And you, you, know? you learn pretty quickly the ones that do. Yeah. A believer's integrity in business and work can further the cause of God's kingdom. Because we bear the name Christian, mm -hmm. people watch us closely to see if we live authentically. Yeah. Unsaved people often base their attitudes toward Christ on what they see in us. So we need to honor Jesus in a way that points people toward him. Yeah. Okay, this ends on a really high note. But we find out if we read on, and especially in Chronicles, that yeah. Joash had a Achilles heel also. He right. had a flaw. When, because when uh, Hazael, now Hazael was the king of Syria, whom way back whenever Elijah was still around, that God said would help, you know, he would that, that he would help destroy Baal because he was going to come against Israel. Well, he's coming against Judah here. And Joash, is, I guess, has a momentary lapse because he emptied the temple and offers to bribe him with some of these things, same things that, Gold, I guess, from the yeah, temple. Yeah. And um, uh, without Jehoiada's guidance, Joash fell away from the Lord. Joash. And eventually, and this again we get from Chronicles, Second Chronicles 24, 17 through 22. Joash was wounded in battle with the Syrians, mm. and he was subse subsequently assassinated. Right. 
and uh, he was, but not by his successor, because he was succeeded by uh, some good kings, and um, then, well, eventually a bad king. But we'll that we'll get into that next week. But um, but back in the northern kingdom, just to get caught up, what's going on there? Uh, J. Um, just just not long before Joash um, dies, is killed, um, Elisha, die, Elisha dies. So we've got those two prominent... Uh, that doesn't mean it's the end of the prophets. We have no. prophets all throughout, but Correct. but he dies. And um, and then back in the northern kingdom, um, Jehu dies, and then he, he is succeeded by his four successors, yeah. his son, grandson, great-grandson, and great-great-grandson. And then his great great grandson is assassinated, and from that point on, the the uh, assassinations going. and murders and yeah. and short reigns and yeah. the then Hoshea who assassinated his preced the preceding king, um, was the last king, and he was the one who was in power when the kingdom ends. So yeah. we'll talk about that next week. And I, I really we'll get okay. there, but but you have like. You know, uh, Zachariah, uh, son, six months, uh, murder, yeah, yeah. murdered by Shalom. Uh, Shalom, one month, murdered by Menahem. <laughs> you know, and, and none of these are Menahem, related, none of these are direct relatives. Actually, went ten years, but he died, right? Yes. And then you had uh, uh, Rekahiah, and he went two years, but he was murdered by Pekah, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and and then Pekah was murdered by Hoshiah. Anyway, and then of course the Shia was one disposed by Assyria. Yeah, but yeah, you have that going on, and that's on the Israel side or the Northern Kingdom. And then on the Judah Kingdom, you'll have some of the three months. Yeah, we have months, uh, eleven years. Um, uh, Amaziah and uh, Azariah were good, and Jotham. You had three good kings, but then they're succeeded by Ahaz, who was a bad, was a bad king. But well, he he was actually king whenever the Northern Kingdom. Right, and then. And, and then the, I guess you know the southern kingdom is going to go another uh, uh, what, another, 150 another years. about a hundred and thirty more years. Hundred thirty more years, something like that. that. Well, let's see, it's from seven twenty two to uh, five eighty six. About a hundred and yeah, about I think it's about a, close to one hundred forty years. Anyway, they uh, so you see that going on but here as well. That that was probably only because they did have some good kings. Yeah. And I want to say, you know, and that's where you kind of get the... Or some goodness in, in you, you some of You get to a little bit of streak going on because, you know, after Jehoshaphat, you know, there's about 10 years for three different kings and uh, bad. Mm -hmm. And then, then you have uh, jo Joash. I know Joash is going to go bad eventually. But then you have mm -hmm. his son, which is Amaziah, and he's he's going to be a half-half type thing, too. Starting off good, finishing bad. But then you're going to have two good ones in a row. And, and then is Josiah one of those? Uh, no. It's actually uh, Uzziah, Uzziah. Uzziah and Jotham. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do right. And then you're going to have Ahaz is going to do bad. And then you're going to have uh, Hezekiah is going to do good. And But, but eventually you're going to get... Hezekiah was probably one of the better yeah. ones. But he, and, and you're going to get to Josiah, which is the one we were studying on the Wednesday Wednesday night, night, you know, a couple after that. So I want to say that it kind of started that back in that rhythm. But but really, like you said, the Israel or the Northern Kingdom never really got started in that rhythm. <laughs> yeah, know? and they and they after they might have had a a, a, a chance if jo, if Jehu, but but I just. But but we know that okay, they are going to come back together. You okay, know, Josiah was probably the last good king of Judah. He was, and and so that God gave them, you know, maybe they had that one last. It kind of looks like they had that one last. Revival, yeah, and, and I've, I've heard I hear some some people, optimistic believers say, I think we're going to have one more good revival. That would be great, but it didn't last long, did it? Yeah, it went down. I mean, J Josiah, you know, went on. They for ended about on four bad years, kings, yeah, and then the four bad kings that only lasted about twenty years, all of them together. Well, you know, you know God. Is that so different from today? No. Are we, you it know, are like we really surprised? When, when, when people are following God, when a, yeah. when a nation's following God and, and looking to him, it seems like it's the nest, nation is blessed. Yeah. And when they're not, and when they're putting him behind, it seems like the nation is not. And, and, so, and, and even looking at stuff today, it just seems that way. And maybe may we're God looking at it through, us, through our yeah. skewed eyes, but it, it seems that way. It seems like when you're following God, 
then God blesses. And when you're not following mm-hmm. God, you're following other things and idols and whatever, then yeah, probably even if he blessed you, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> so, but, but, but really, uh, it, it's a good lesson for us here in mm-hmm. America, you know. Um, and, and we see some, um, well, in, in the, like the primaries just this week, there were a few things that were hopeful. There were some things that were discouraging. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're not to get discouraged. We're, no. we're, we're not, we're to live in this world until we're not living in this world. So yeah. there, I, there, there's a plan regardless. Yeah. But I go God back, I go world. back to second Chronicles seven fourteen. Okay. What it says if my people, it doesn't say if the world. Yeah, said, if my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. And that's the yeah. first hardest thing to do. Yeah. And I've forgotten the rest of it. It's kind of like turn from their old ways. And, ways and, and, return, and, to and return to me. Yeah. Yes. And I'll be their but, God. But if it's my people. people. Yeah. yeah. And, but and, it, it's not, he's not depending on the world. He's depending on his people. Correct. And that's you and me. That's it. Um, one of the cool things about going to Israel is, uh, you know, the guy to start with, you know, told us, welcome home. because So you know, this was a Christian guide, I'm assuming. He was. He, yes. he, he, he was. Was, it, was he a messianic? Yes. Yeah. I think those, I love, well, I love all people. Yeah. I, I think they're the most yeah. interesting. He, he, I, you he, know, he you, lives in Jerusalem and he, you know, and he's a Christian. But uh, yeah, so he knows, you know. But they're not persecuted, are they, by the Jewish people? Uh, not, not necessarily. Not, but not really. I mean, you, right there, uh, the Jewish or the you know the Orthodox Jews, if you uh-huh. will, you know they're 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 looking for peace and love and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know that type of stuff. Uh, and they're uh, just so sorry that these Messianic Christians have yeah, lost the way, fell you know? from the <laughs> way. Get, get out your psalms, start praying more, yeah. you while know, staying in the so that that kind of. Um, anyway, but you know you you do have the Palestinians there as well, and you have, I mean it's 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 so much. Uh, but there you, aren't, you, but aren't there Palestinians up. and Arabs and people coming to Israel yeah. and then you because have, of the freedoms they yeah. have? And then you have the Catholic section over there, the Christian yeah. section. You have that. And, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's. I mean, it's but you don't you plot. don't you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to live there permanently. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. This sounds like it'd be such a fascinating place. I know it is a fascinating place. It's, it's there's not to get too long here, but but yeah, I mean. It was it was incredible. It was enjoyable. Um, all the sights we saw and everything like that. And, but you know, watching the uh, the politics of it too, what we could see. Okay, mind you're only there for eight days, roughly. You know, after all your traveling and stuff. It seemed like 20, thirty days. Yeah, you, you really don't get uh, an overall picture. So I, I'm really not speaking from someone that knows. You know, but but it does. There's a lot of intricate details going on between these uh, borders and and these uh, parts that. Palestinians in control of and Israel's in control of that part and who's doing the security over this, who's doing the security over that, who's in charge of the Temple Mount, who's in charge of the rest of the stuff. I mean But his, it, his it, people, it would exhaust you. But the people, Israel people yeah. have um they keep have going adopted. they keep they, going. Yeah, they, it, it's like this is part of their daily life because it is part of their daily and it's life. Been their, it's been their life for uh, well, at least well, since far 19, back uh, yeah. fifty whatever, you know, or sixty whatever it was. But and yeah. and I mean, well, I mean, in the in the present, yeah. But I mean, they have been ever since God made the covenant with them. Practically, people right. have been trying to get rid of them, right? And and you know, and no other nation and, has and ever you, sustained those uh, the the disasters that they have, and still. So doesn't that tell you that? Yeah. But it, that's why people don't and like you, them. And you They're, have the um, Lebanon area and the Syria <laughs> area and the pa- and the Jordan uh-huh. area and then the Palestine and everything and mixed in there. And it's just like, wow. It's one little nation. Yeah. You know, which is sometimes 80 miles wide, roughly, over to the Jordan from the Mediterranean. And I don't know how long it is. You could probably drive from one end of it to the other in six hours. <laughs> you know, you know we, we can't do that in Texas. So, <laughs> Well, it's what, the size of Israel, the size of New Jersey? or Yes, or, correct. In the the or Delaware somewhere. It's like one of the smaller space. Jersey. So a lot, lot smaller space. and um, But but we see a lot of stuff. Um, it, it's just incredible, you know. And, and it's, a, it's a contested part of the world from way back when because to get from one part of the continent over to the other, the only place you could pass through was kind of the Fertile Crescent area. Mm-hmm. And there's only certain passages that you can do through Israel you know, without going into a lot of trouble to get there. 
And uh, those passages are still there. So the control of that means you're uh, uh, in, in, in a strong position. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, we know God's plan is the perfect plan always, you know. So, you know, why did he pick this part? And why did he pick that part? And, uh, you know, we sit there and ask that, but you start seeing some of these reasons why, just because of where it was, where the, where the people were settling, it, it was a key area, a very key area, it still is, I mean, when you think about it, so, but it's beautiful, and we'll be talking about that more, like I said, on the Wednesday night, so that'll be fun. Yeah, and, and the, you know, they could have cut us off if, earlier if they wanted to. We yeah, you, you turn off the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and pray and get out of here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you uh, for reminding us what we're responsible for as stewards, mm -hmm. Lord, and what we need to continue to do as stewards. Dear Lord, we, uh, we need to continue to follow you and the Spirit in our life, leading us. But Lord, you give us so many things that we still, as believers today, need to be doing. Whether that's taking care of, of the property you've given us, whether it's here at the church or at home whether it's reaching those around us with the, the gospel message, which always for us need to do, whether it's uh, in our business practices being Christian in that as well, that there's no difference in a Christian life, whether it's a job away from the church or a job in the church, that we still are representing you. So Lord, let let our, our word be our word. Let us be honest in everything we do. And most of all, let it glorify you. Let Christ be seen in all. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We love you. We'll talk to you next week.